Hello everyone, welcome to my channel on uh, understanding finance and sports. Today's episode is on football player transfers. So let's get started. So what exactly is a player transfer? Well, first and foremost, it's a business transaction. It's between two football clubs. You have a buying club and a selling club and it involves a transfer of a football player with the buying club purchasing the player from the selling club which results in the move by the player from the selling club to the buying club. The buying club pays the selling club the purchase price which is also called the transfer fee and this is the compensation that is paid by the buying club to the selling club for the player. The player therefore breaks his current playing contract which he has with the selling club and enters into a new contract with the buying club. Let's look at the uh, player transfer overview in a simple diagrammatical form. So you've got the buying club. I've mentioned buying club and selling club I think <laughs> hundreds of times. Um, and you've got the seller club, the buyer club and the seller club. And uh, the buyer club needs uh, a football player. Uh, maybe it needs a forward to improve its uh, attacking, uh, attacking, uh, you know, skills. Um, and therefore, it approaches the seller club. If the seller club's got a player that the buyer club's interested in, and negotiations start between the two clubs for the player concerned. And at the end of the day, if they agree, this results in a transfer fee, the compensation, the purchase price being paid by the buying club to the uh, selling club, which is called, as I mentioned, the transfer fee. And it results in the player moving from the selling club to the buying club under a new contract. Now, there are a number of people involved in this, uh, in this uh, transaction, namely, obviously the player himself, the, the, the buyer, the seller, the player's agent, he plays a very, very important role. And it, it sometimes so happens that the clubs also have their own agents involved in the transaction. So let's uh, look at um, a, um, a, a sample player transfer process. So the buyer club needs a player, uh, a forward to improve its attacking, uh, attacking capabilities. The buying club identifies a player, a forward, they wish to recruit in their team. That player currently plays for another club and therefore the buying club sends an official inquiry to the seller club asking them if they are willing to release the player. The selling club, if it's interested, asks the player if he is interested in, uh, in moving. The player will then talk to his agent and his uh, professional advisors Contract negotiations will start and then ultimately the terms of sale which could include things like apart from the transfer fee, the sell on percentages and other financial uh, inducements, uh, bonuses, uh, etc. Finally, the sale contract is agreed between the two clubs involved. The buying club agrees a contract with the player, his salary, bonuses, the length of the contract, things to do with his image rights and merchandising, etc. There's a medical examination which takes place uh, before the player transfers to, um, to his new club. And uh, assuming that all's well, he passes his medical examination. The player then officially joins his new club. So how does one actually calculate the value of the player transfer? How much is that player actually worth? And the transfer fee basically and that depends on a number of factors. So uh, one of the factors is uh, in and these are in no particular order the time left in his current contract so if he's got a year to go then he'll be less expensive than if he's got three years to go in his current contract. The age of the player concerned if he's 19 years old and uh, he's got another 10 years uh, in him he's at uh, he's yet to even reach his peak uh, he'll command a higher price than uh, if he is, for example, 35 years old and coming towards the end of his career. 
his position. Uh, traditionally, attacking players, players who score goals, uh, are uh, uh, considered to be worth more than defensive players or uh, even goalkeepers. Although, to be uh, honest, each player is, uh, is, is worth his own position in, in gold, really. Uh, his past performance and statistics obviously are very important, um, as are his record regarding his injuries, his uh, relationships with, uh, with his uh, teammates, his attitude, uh, any scandals that he may have been involved in, his reputation generally, his marketing potential and his commercial value, very important. I mean, um, will this player also be able to contribute to the revenues of, uh, uh, of, of the club directly in terms of t-shirt sales? Has he got a huge fan base, social media following? Uh, media coverage, uh, very important. Uh, the perception of that player um, in the media and in the fans. Uh, and the demand for that player. If that player is in demand and let's say 10 different clubs are uh, wanting to purchase him, then obviously he's going to have a very, very high price tag. And uh, finally, at the end of the day, it just depends on the negotiations. Um, you know, they say that uh, something is worth um, only as much as what someone's prepared to pay for it and pays for it. Uh, and therefore, at the end of the day, negotiations, which can actually be quite creative, uh, uh, you know, ultimately decide the price that that player will transfer from one club to another. And there's a lot of creativity that takes place in each football transfer transaction. Okay, let's look at some basic cash flows involved in a player transfer. And uh, there's uh, quite a bit of money involved, uh, involved here. Let's see who gets uh, what and who's involved. Obviously, you've got the player, and the player by moving to his new club is uh, entitled to his new salary. And uh, we'll have a look at an example of this uh, in a minute. So, uh, so the player obviously gets his new salary. Uh, the player's agent gets uh, a commission which is normally a percentage of the new wages of the player over the term that's, uh, that's been agreed. And in my previous uh, video on uh, player agents, we spoke a bit about uh, the commission that are normally charged by the uh, agents. Uh, and this can be anything from 4% to 10% um, of, the, um, uh, of the wages of the player. Uh, the player's agent can also be entitled to bonuses if a deal goes through. Again, we'll uh, we'll have a look at that. And uh, the 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 commissions of the player's agent is uh, normally the responsibility, or contractually, I should say, is the responsibility of the player. After all, he's representing the player, and he's got a contract with the player to represent him. But it's normally paid by the buying club. So uh, this is something that's. Uh, uh, you know, uh, up for negotiation, but normally the buying club end up uh, paying the uh, player agent fee, um, uh, and 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 that's uh, that's that's the case in practice. Or it could be shared, but the buying club will normally pay the majority of the player agent fee, which can be substantial. Which uh, again we'll see. Uh, you've got the buying club obviously, and the buying club plays the pays the transfer price to the uh, selling club, the seller, the selling club receives the transfer price, obviously. Uh, in, in football, probably in any sport, each deal is unique. And uh, what's up for grabs, what's up for negotiation, you start off with a blank sheet of paper and effectively you work your way through that negotiation. And like I said, there's um, quite a bit of creativity uh, that can sometimes be involved in making these deals uh, go through. And uh, to be honest, uh, anything and everything is possible. Um, you can negotiate just about anything that, that you want. Okay. Um, as far as the transfer market is concerned, in 2019, that was a record year for player transfers. Uh, here we are talking all over the world. There were 8,000, more than 8,000 player transfers uh, in that year for a total value of $7.3 billion. The biggest transfer markets were the UK, Italy, Spain, and Germany, where you've got uh, the biggest leagues uh, in the world. And um, the transfer 
volume total $4.8 billion, with the UK being involved in the uh, highest uh, amount of transfers, $1.5 billion. And uh, this data is uh, fairly readily available as all the transfers have to be registered with FIFA. So let's uh, look at an example of um, a real life transfer. In 2016, when Paul Pogba transferred from Juventus to uh, Man United, uh, he entered into a five-year contract with Man United, uh, which runs up to 2021. The transfer fee was 105 million euros, which uh, at the time was 89 million pounds. It, uh, that was the transfer fee paid by Man U to Juventus. And at that time, it was the most expensive transfer of all time. Paul Pogba's salary is uh, reportedly uh, 290,000 uh, pounds uh, a week, which uh, makes it around 15 million pounds per year. His agent, who negotiated that transaction was uh, Mina Raiola, who I mentioned in my previous uh, previous uh, video, and uh, he reportedly earned a commission as follows on this one transaction. He received 27 million euros from Juventus reportedly, and that was calculated as follows: on the expected transfer price, he received nine. 20% uh, of 90 million, which was euros, which was the base price expected for Paul Pogba. Uh, he ended up getting uh, 15 million in excess of that, and therefore he was entitled to a bonus of 60% of the excess, and that's a further $9 million. So he received 27 million, sorry, euros, 27 million euros from Juventus. Manchester United paid uh, Mina Raiola uh, the percentage uh, that he is entitled to from the player, uh, being the uh, uh, a percentage of Paul Pogba's wages over the term of the five-year contract, and that came to a reportedly 19.4 million euros. And uh, Paul Pogba uh, was uh, expected to pay. Um, his player agent 2.6 million uh, euros again as a result of uh, their contract and therefore Mina Raiola, uh, Paul Pogba's agent and in a way I guess Juventus's agent as well, he represented them both, um, walked away with that one transaction with 49 million euros. That's uh, a lot of money. Um, for one transaction. And it just shows you the money that's involved in football and in transferring football players. Okay, um, let's look at some player transfer amount records over the years. This is just basically for interest to show you how money has come into football and how these uh, amounts have grown. In 1893, you had the first £100 transfer when Patrick Groves transferred from West Bromwich Albion to Aston Villa. You reached £1,000 when Alf Commons in 1905 transferred from Sunderland to Middlesbrough. You broke the £50,000 mark when Hans Jepsen in 1952, so there's quite a break, uh, transferred from Atalanta to Napoli in the Italian League. And later, uh, the transfer record over uh, £100,000 was 142000 when Luis Suarez transferred in 1961 from Barcelona to Inter Milan. So this was uh, in the early days from 1893 to 1961. These were all records uh, at the time. Then in 1975, Giuseppe Savoldi broke the million pound transfer market and set a new record when he was transferred for 1.2 million pounds from Bologna to Napoli. Jean-Pierre Papin of France, he transferred from Marseille to AC Milan in 1992 for 10 million pounds. 
The 50 million pound was broken in 2009 with Kakao transferring from AC Milan to Real Madrid for 56.1 million pounds. And we just spoke about Paul Pogba setting a record of 89 million pounds when he transferred in 2016 from Juventus to Manchester United. And who holds the current record? I think I mentioned it more than once previously in my other videos. It's Neymar who in 2017 was transferred from Barcelona to Paris Saint-Germain for 198 million pounds. That's the current record. So that's all for today, folks. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you enjoyed this short program. As always, I hope you're there for my next episode. In the meanwhile, take care and best wishes. This is Faisal signing out.